Hello everybody and welcome to another video from ArcadeComponents.com. This time I've got a chip tester professional that I got from the 8-Bit Museum in Germany. It's an amazing tester, but I've been lax on setting up any of the additional firmware from what was on the chip when I bought the programmer and assembled it. So I went and got my password and downloaded the latest firmware and promptly had problem after problem trying to update it. No fault of the uh, creator or anything like that. I'm just running something that wasn't, you know, easy to uh, to to you know, use with the instructions that were given. So if I was, you know, I'm running Windows 10, and so looking at it, I went and bought one of these off of eBay, and it's you know, it's an AVR ASP Mark II in-system programmer that plugs into USB and plugs right in with the little supplied adapter to the programmer. You know, I thought, okay, that'll be a simple way to do it. But get it, look in device manager, and there's no drivers for it. So go online and look. Yeah, that's a problem in Windows 10. Okay, so I could go to GitHub and download a newer version of drivers for this. And I tried that, and the problem is, is it requires you to reboot your Windows and put your Windows into a mode where it can accept unsigned drivers. And that's a dangerous thing to do. I'm sorry, I spent almost 20 years working at Cisco Systems, as a, most of that as a security-focused person, and that's just not going to fly. So uh, I had to figure out something else to do. So did a bit of research on the web and found that, uh, well, I can go ahead and go to Microchip Technical Support, and see about downloading a new version of uh, some development software. So if you do this, just go out to Microchip Technical Support Portal and go to Development Tools and Software, and it'll pop up in another window. And here you can see the different tools that they have. And we're going to look under Develop, and we're going to look for Microchip Studio, and we're going to click that, and it's going to open up another browser window. And we're going to download Microchip Studio. Now, when you go to install this, it took forever on my computer. It took over 30 minutes, almost 40 minutes to install. I thought, oh, great, I can get this done and, and get it done in time to go out to uh, watch my wife do a presentation and then go get dinner afterwards. No, uh, I had to leave it and go and uh, finish this when I came back. It took that long to install this software. So once I got that installed, then Device Manager was happy. It saw that there was a programmer there. So great, let's go over and open up a command prompt and let's do the wind flash. So, okay. Now, he tells you to drag and drop the uh, firmware file over to it. So not a big deal. Uh, you can run it from, from here too, but uh, there's the AVR dude command. There's the type of programmer. I already put that in the file. Uh, the problem is port. Now, the hex file, I can come out here and say, okay, it's... Um, Chip dash tester pro dash. And there's the file. MCU type is an M2560, but it doesn't matter what I put in here because it's going to come up here and fail. And it's failing. It's saying that I didn't put the correct chip type in. The valid parts are, but I did put the valid part in. I put M2560, which is listed down here. Uh, right here for the Atmega 2560. The problem is, is this port. There's no port number, no RS-232 port associated with the AVR ISP Mark II. It's a USB device. So I came out and went, okay, well, let's go to the other file, the other command prompt, and we'll run it. And, um, well, let's see. Let's see. Running it, it just comes up and says, AVR dude, done. Thank you. Woohoo, we're done. But it's saying that uh, USB uh, dev open. It did not find the USB device. So that's a problem. So it's not working. What do we do? So remember the Microchip Studio, we downloaded that. So we can come up here and we can go ahead and run it. So here we go. Microchip Studio under recently added software. And they make this stupid easy to use, but it takes a bit to look through and try and figure out what it is to, that you need to do. So we come over here to Tools, and we're going to go to Device Programming. Now under here, you'll choose what tool it is, AVR ISP Mark II. It's going to say that or Simulator because it's detected this. 
and then you'll choose your device from a long list of devices. So it's Atmega 2560. And what interface? There's only one. It's the ISP interface. So you apply it, and when you apply it, then all the rest of the menu items come in. Uh, we're not going to mess with interface settings. We're not going to mess with tool information. We can go to device information. We can read what's on the device. Uh, oh, target connector seems to be reversed. No. I unplugged it. Plug it back in. Close. Read. And there we are. It's going to detect the device. And then we can come down. We're going to skip the oscillator calibration. We're going to go down to fuses. And it's going to read the fuses in. And, and what we want them set to is, like he says in the video, FF for extended, D7 for high, and FF for low. Now, that, that's going to help keep the configuration information in it. It's not going to erase all the parts of the chip. Uh, we're going to come back up here to memories, though. And this is where we're going to choose the file to program. Now, you see down here where it says production file. That's not it. That's looking for an ELF production file. And you're getting the firmware in a hex file. So go back up to memories and browse to where you have the file. Choose your hex file. And then when you choose it, you're going to hit program. And this is going to take a while. This is not a fast process. It's going to go in, it's going to erase, and then it's going to program the flash, and then it's going to go through and verify the flash. And when it's done verifying, the device is going to reboot, and you'll see the firmware come up with the new version. And I hope that helps you. Uh, I, it took me a little bit to get this all figured out, so I thought, you know, I'll just go ahead and put it into a video. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And uh, if you like the channel, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be releasing uh, another video soon in the uh, Circuit Basics for arcade game circuit boards to help you understand you know, how the different uh, components operate as far as you know, your reset circuits, your clock circuits. Uh, the next one's going to be on interrupts, and it's going to continue on. Thanks, and have a great day.